Welcome back to the Age Gap Realness Podcast. I am your host, Natalie Workman, and today I have the one, the only, Heather Block. Oh so excited to have you here. I'm excited too. This is the first time that you've been on the podcast. On a podcast. Any podcast? Yeah. This is your first, I'm taking mm-hmm. your podcast virginity? 1,000%. Oh my gosh. I couldn't think of a better person, quite That's honestly. so true. So true. Yeah. This will be the best podcast you ever do. I believe it. It might also be the worst because it's the only at this point. <laughs> it's fine. Well, <laughs> whatever. The bar's set. It's, yeah, it's totally fine. <laughs> Either way. Why it's so shocking to me is because Heather is in this space often with us. I feel like you are a part of this podcast production, but yeah. you're like this quiet little voice behind it. You're not on it. So now you're here. And here I am. Here you are. Can we tell everybody our first interaction with each other? Let's do it. Do you remember our first interaction? Very well. Okay. So walk me through how we met. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, well, this was like (laughs) 2010, (laughs) Mm -hmm. right? Uh, So at Audigy Group. And uh, they had told me, well, I was doing events, right? Doing multiple things back in the day. Wearing multiple hats. Still Um, do. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Anyway, uh, they said, hey, good news. Uh, we're going to get you an, a summer intern to help with this big event that we had coming up in September. Uh, and, and she can help you uh, do uh, stuffing binders and creating all the collateral. Taking away all the paper cuts. Yes, no paper cuts have. for you. And I was like, I had 800 binders to do. So it was like, or actually, I think it was like 500. I'm I think it was more like 8,000. Okay, we'll say 8,000. My 8, memory serves 8,000. Let's 000. do that. So spoiler alert, the uh, intern is Natalie, Yours truly. Natalie Workman. And so, you know, we're on the third floor. Uh, or Guys, this was my floor. first job. Like, let's just, from my perspective, very first time I've ever worked in a corporate environment. And this one Good is setup. Good setup. my boss. You were uh, my boss. I guess we could call it that. Yeah, you were. Okay, that's, we'll call it that for the moment. Um, so then the, the elevator opens on the second floor and out, it's like a ray of sunshine came out of the elevator and out walks a set of legs, just <laughs> legs, because she had on... It was summer. It was summer. It was summer. And you had on the shortest shorts <laughs> ever. And you had this long blonde hair and this sweet, innocent face. So red wedges. Been... They and were red, red wedges. wedges. The shorts were red, too. Oh, but I the think legs. the shirt was red. I don't remember because of the legs and the, the legs Ooh, and the hair and the hair and the legs yikes. walking around with the legs. I really thought that was a professional look, too. <laughs> you looked great. Let's not underplay the fact that you looked great. And I was supposed to carry these boxes that were heavy oh with the binders yes. in them. And so I bend over. <laughs> and you had your red <laughs> red wedges on. <laughs> Day one on the job. Yeah, making really great impressions. Really in a work environment. Really thinking they're going <laughs> to hire me for a long-term position. Uh, yeah, but you were, so su- you were so sweet too. And you were humble. And that honestly, yes, I remember the legs. But honestly, I do remember just your your attitude and your willingness to do literally whatever. She's yanking my chain right now. But I'm now. not joking. No, I'm really not. Uh you you always have had that like I'll yes, I'll do whatever. That's fine. Mm. Nothing was like it wasn't beneath you. Mm. And cuz you sat in a cubicle with boxes of binders. 8,000 of them. You know, the kind that you that are clear on the front you and you like we printed i think you might have even trimmed them to get the white border off because we printed them in-house there were multiple steps to getting (laughs) these binders stuffed and then not only were there multiple steps in the first way that the binders were supposed to be stuffed but i got hired for an extra week because the binders needed something else there was a round two of the (laughs) stuffing so i think i like had to take out the first things and put in the second things and i was still probably wearing you know, three inch shorts at the time, <laughs> my spandex for volleyball. That was a hot mess. There was no full time position extended at that moment. Well, not at that particular time. No, no. Just wasn't was... one, there just wasn't a position at that time. But it wasn't because of your shorts. Don't worry. Oh, thank God. Because your your stuffing skill set is was on point. Mm, some serious stuff games. <laughs> Or stuff game. I think that's what I meant to say. We'll hashtag something. All right. Anyway, so you have worked with one other guest that happens to appear on the show quite frequently, Mr. Brandon Dawson, for how many years now? Ten. Ten Mm -hmm. years. Yeah. Yeah. Almost almost 11. It's crazy that you've known each other for almost 11 years. I know. Yes, it is. It's it's, it's awesome. So how did you start with Brandon? And what was your first impression of Brandon? I've, I don't think I've heard this story. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, starting with Audigy Group, I found, okay, 
2008, I found an ad on Craigslist. Oh my gosh. Professional development marketing coordinator. And I was looking for something new because I was working for a print company. Economy wasn't doing that well. A lot of those kinds of businesses were going out of business. Mm. So I was like, well, let's find something new. Uh, I ticked the boxes for all of the the requirements. And I had an interview uh, with, at the time, because Audigy wasn't very big. And so it was out, the HR was outsourced to Minnesota. Oh. Yeah, Terry Frain was her name. Okay. Terry, if you're watching this. No, I don't even know where the camera's at. It's really dark Somewhere. In here. Anyway, uh, and then she said, hey, we want you to come in. And then my first in-person interview was with, at the time, Ashley Schmitz, mm -hmm. who is now Mrs. Mason Walker, mm -hmm. Ashley Walker. And, uh, and then she wanted me to come back for a third round with the executive team. Brandon actually wasn't a part of my third round, which okay. was a live presentation. I had five minutes to teach them to do something. Mm. And that's when I demonstrated, at the time, my PowerPoint skills. Uh, and not your binder short. stuffing skills? Not my binder. And Damn. I did not wear short shorts. Missed opportunity. That was really? a missed opportunity. Although I did get the job. So How that, did they hire that. you? Why did they <laughs> oh, no, hire it's you? Crazy. It's crazy. Your PowerPoint uh, skills really were what you showed them? Well, I... I I figured it out. I didn't actually know how good I was at PowerPoint. Isn't I, that they just funny? said, teach us something. And, and I was like, like okay. I know so how I, to do yeah, this. I, so I did. And uh, yeah, I got hired. Um, and then, you know, it's funny. My first, my first time I actually met Brandon was in Palm Springs at an event, at a Patients for Life event, that like a couple weeks later. Okay. So my first impression was him walking into the room. And let me just tell you, back in the day... Oh. Hawaiian I mean, shirt? Every, did he have a oh, Hawaiian no, shirt on? Did not, did not oh, okay. No. All right. Guys, he I used just... to wear Hawaiian shirts. I don't know if we've <laughs> talked about this. Can you even imagine Brandon in a Hawaiian shirt? No. Because I, no. 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 But that's that's what he used to wear. But I can't imagine him in a polo. In a polo. Because he what? still wears polos. He, he likes just the wears polos. nicer, less colorful polos these uh, days. Yeah. Those other polos were not for mm -hmm. anybody. And he still has all of them. They're sitting in his closet. Oh. I just, because they have don't your name allow him. embroidered. Back in the day, Audigy employees got their name embroidered on it. Brandon Dawson. I had Heather Demery on there. And now you're Heather Block. I'm Heather Block, yeah. So, yeah, so he, he my first impression was him in front of the room doing his thing, mm. right? Like like a lot of people's Solid first, impression, first impression. Great first impression, right? But there was always this ushering around him. It was almost like he was a, it was like a celebrity, like you couldn't talk to him. You're like, nobody can talk to him. No, no, don't talk to him. Don't talk so to him. It, you know, I had to go through people to talk to him at first. And then I was just kind of like, oh, I, I was kind of like scared, Ooh. right? Yeah. Because it made you CEO. nervous. Yeah. Made me nervous. Yeah. So how it many, wasn't. How yeah, many team members were there? Uh, I was the 37th employee. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And there were enough like people around that. Because like I, I could also see with 37 employees, him being really able to be actively. Yeah. Involved. He still walked around and, okay. and, and our team meetings and stuff. He was involved and he walked in and out. But I just. You know, I hadn't had the interaction with him yet that came later, which then solidified. What interaction came later with Brandon? Uh, I was really actually hoping, to be honest with you, that your yeah. story of initially interacting with him was more like how particular he is with his hairbrush. I think somebody else had like mm. has like a funny story about Brandon. Guys, I also don't know if I've shared this with you. He has this hairbrush thing that it's very particular hairbrush. You now know the hairspray that he uses. Mm -hmm. Very particular. Uh, and I think one point he asked a team member to like grab him a hairbrush because he was having this hairbrush meltdown. And luckily, you know, everything ended up going okay. Yeah. But I was wanting like something funny to be your first interaction with him because I feel like it'd be more fitting than I know. him up on stage. Yeah, we didn't, yeah, not first interactions. Okay. Later, later, later though, we have a lot of fun interactions. They came. Uh, yes, they definitely did come. But um, yeah, the the later time, uh, came from, gosh, I don't even know how to like frame this story. Uh, basically, my mindset back in the day was, you know, centered around myself. My self-orientation was very high. Mm. Um, call it a victim kind of mentality. Call it like uh, things were, ha I always thought things happened to me, mm. not because of me. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, which this was like t the end of 2010, um, back then it was like, it's just who I was. And when I went into Brandon one time, I went in because he had always told the company, if you if you want to move up, if you want to contribute, you need to come with solutions, you need to innovate, you need to find ways to you know, contribute at that highest impact. And so I thought, okay, if I want to move up, I have an idea. I like the behavior stuff that our company does, so I'm going to try to create a position around that. So I had this whole pitch dialed in, go into him, sit in front of him at his desk. 
And back then, of course, I hadn't had a lot of interactions with him. But if you've ever sat in front of Brandon and when he's got his glasses on and he looks at you over the top of them like that. Can you do that in the camera? Like Ooh, one of these which, cameras? Should I, yeah. I, I don't even know if I'm looking at, at the camera. Let's see. <laughs> yeah. It's like he does one of these where he's like, I don't know. I'm not doing a good impression of it. No, it's great. It's, it's intense. It's powerful. It's intense. And so he was, as I was pitching this potential opportunity, he was somewhat watching me like that. Mm. Suffice to say, at the end of it, he actually showered me with a lot of great compliments. Because at the time, I was in a position where I was presenting in front of the members all around the country when we were doing our trainings. And and he would tell me, like, gosh, when you, you know, you're in front of the audience, you're amazing. You do this. And 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 when you walk into a room, you know, you command attention and people listen and you're interactive and engaging. And and man, does that somebody with self high self orientation? Oh, 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 he was just oh, like pumping me. me oh, more. Uh, yeah, loving that, right? Uh and then, you know, then came the super look over the top of his glasses, you know, where he was like, look, 85% of the time, it's amazing, but 15% of the time screws it all up. Now I use a different word. What, what word did he use? Seriously? What? You, know you can cuss on the show. All right. He said 15% of the time fucks it all up. And he just stared at me. But then he stared at me. Like, I think that's the that's the the visceral feeling I got at that moment. You know that feeling that, like, it starts at the top of the back of your neck and, like, it, it's a chill that goes down and it kind of, like, encompasses your chest. I can feel it right now as I'm describing it. And, like, you, it's a panic almost. Yes. Like, my instantly my hands start getting, like, clammy. Is your mouth dry? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, like, right now, I, I, I won't forget that moment because mm -hmm. then the next thing he said to me was, you know, if you think that I'm going to have somebody – represent our company at that level where I know that 15% of the time they might fuck something up, mm. you're sorely mistaken. Because for me, you got to be a minimum of 5%. You know, you got to be 95-5. 95% of you is always great to go. And I know that maybe there's there's a little bit of wiggle room there, right? You don't have to be perfect, yeah. but you have to have 95% confidence. High, high confidence. That's the confidence meter, right? Mm -hmm. That was my first real interaction was the confidence meter. I didn't realize that this was one of your first interactions with him. Real I thought that ones. you had yeah. more contact mm -hmm. points. I didn't We did it. Yeah, we really didn't. Um I mean, he was very cordial and awesome and fun every time I was around him, but we weren't mm -hmm. we didn't have a real deep uh relationship at that particular point. Mm -hmm. Um but he knew about. I mean, people talked, you know, my supervisors and whoever was managing me or whoever in the company knew me, like he knew things. Mm -hmm. Like the company you know he know he knew he has this ever he, he present know, he, this like omnipresence I'm not yes joking. It's he crazy. really is it's it's interesting how information gets passed to him and how quickly he can filter mm -hmm. good information or bad information and then get to the right conversation that needs to be had that's right and 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 yes and know what's going to i love it because he's very black and white in that sense like what's going to contribute to what we're trying to achieve and what's not mm -hmm. let's have the conversation about what is going to contribute to it and so that's what he helped me hone in on. And he told me at that moment, you know, when you walk out of my door, like literally he pointed to the door frame, right? Like when you walk out that door, you're going to decide if you're going to be 95.5 or stay 85.15. And if you choose 85.15, then you can just keep walking out the main door, right? Like basically that's keep what it was. On keep going. walking. And, I, and he was like, and then he looked at me and said, so what do you choose? Like even before I was gonna walk out, he wanted my commitment, and uh, and I said, I know I'm gonna be 95.5. Mm. And then he and I talked through, and he held me accountable to creating my own development plan and how I was gonna get there. Right? He held me accountable to that, and he did some cool things where he said, "Who are the people that you have the most trouble with in the organization? Like, you know, those are gonna be your accountability people that I'm gonna go to at any given time and ask how you're doing. They're gonna know everything that happened today." what you're trying to achieve, and I can call on them at any point and find out your progress. And what ended up happening from that is me breaking away from my high self-orientation, mm -hmm. me realizing that I was in my own way, me realizing that um, I'm a victim, uh, me being a victim is my own issue, right? And so changing that perspective, making that choice and that commitment completely changed my life mm -hmm. and not just professionally. You know, it changed it personally. Mm -hmm. Like I got out of a really destructive relationship at home because mm -hmm. of 
Brandon's ability to help me see something different, which he had, didn't know for years, mm-hmm. right? Like, I, I still don't think he really even understands the impact that he has on me. So I think he does. Yeah. I think he does. He loves you a lot. Well, I love him a lot. I think he's always, <clears throat> I, I didn't know you when you first met him. So I have only heard like stories of the early days. And they're, <laughs> like, I love hearing them. I can hear them over and over. Like, mm. give me some popcorn. Uh, <laughs> but <a> lot. <laughs> what I, yeah, right. But what I love so much is you guys have this strong connection today that is rooted in both of you guys having changed so much mm-hmm. and having grace in the relationship, but also holding each other highly accountable. And in the same way that Brandon held you accountable, I feel like the team of people, you have helped hold him accountable to the type of leader or person that he wants to be, that he's supposed to be. So it's like, it's this really beautiful thing that you probably don't see as much on his side that he feels that way, but I know he does. Like, oh, Heather thinks that I'm this person, so I have to be this person. Mm. So anyway, I wanted to share that with you. Well, thank you. Because that You're does mean welcome. a lot. Yeah. Because you, you get to see that side of him that I obviously I do. don't. Although, as the years went, went on, I get to see a lot of behind the scenes now, which is awesome. Yeah. So how has yeah. how has that changed? So you yeah. had this moment. This was in 2010. Uh, 11. 2011. Yeah, 11. Yeah. So 12, like yeah. eight-ish years ago. Yeah. Eight. Is that it, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Math is not. Math is hard. Right. It's Saturday morning right now. <laughs> and analyze maybe it's me. Saturday afternoon. Is it Saturday? I, what time is it? I don't know. It kind of looks like it's midnight what here. What day is it? Um, October? Is it 2020? <laughs> anyway, okay. that was quite a few years ago. Yes. Your relationship with Brandon has obviously changed. Yeah. Your relationship to what you work on has changed. Absolutely. And you've changed. You're in a different relationship. You've moved yes. from Heather D to Heather B. B. The amazing Nate Block has mm. come in and changed your whole life, which Literally. is also amazing. And some like just huge things have happened <sighs> over the last few years. I know. It's been a literally transformative decade for me, quite honestly. Um, so after, you know, after that interaction, my professional career just like skyrocketed, right? Like because we figured out like where, where my talents were that contributed to the organization. Um, and that meant being able to create content directly for Brandon at first and then for the rest of the executive team and then for the company and then for multiple companies. And then it just like, you know, it just morphed and morphed. And and so I just kept trying to see like, where's the next opportunity? This is what Brandon always talks about. Where you see an opportunity, slot yourself in, see where, how you can, how you can fit and how you can contribute and then duplicate and duplicate. So each department or thing that I did, we were able to duplicate it right across Mm -hmm. multiple verticals and that just like that's transformative in and of itself right just like the sh- the, the the feeling of confidence that you get in yourself just helping helping build things like that that was part one of my conversation with heather tune in next week for part two